Hey everyone, Dave here at Blue Bears Games with another uh, edition of $20 Budget Decks. Today's deck, Elementals. Yes, it's Elementals, but I like the mental part of it. So I went with it. So with Corset 2020 coming out, uh, they made Elementals a, a thing. Uh, so I went back into my collection, looked at all the Elementals I have, and decided to make a deck with it. Uh, one thing that's weird about the elementals is m in most tribes, most of the tribe itself has a very common theme. When I was going through the elementals, they all were different in every way. They all had really different abilities. So I said, hey, let's try to make something out of it. So I'll go ahead and show you what I got. Yeah, it was weird when I was going through it and I was like, wow, these all have completely different abilities from each other. So I went and threw them all in together. They all have something different that they do and, and they kind of help each other. So... I start off with the Fire Shrine Keeper. Uh, more recent, it, the reason I chose this one, it's, it's a one drop, it's a one one, but it has Menace, so it has Evasion. I'm a big fan of Evasion whenever I can get it, and a one to cast one one that has Menace, it means that you're essentially going to get at least two or three damage in this, with this just to start with f by itself. Uh, the other reason why I chose it was because it's ability. Again, all Elementals had some weird different abilities. This one was actually on the top of my list. Uh, you can sacrifice them to deal 3 damage to up to 2 target creatures. To each, by the way. So you can actually clear the board of 2 of your opponent's creatures with this guy. And that's for late game. Yes, it's expensive, but that's for a very late game if for some reason it's going long and you have a lot of, like, a clogged board. He helps kind of clear the way. You know, it's kind of like that scene from Independence Day where, you know, they plow the road. That's kind of what he does. So, 2 of those. Uh, the next one drop was a one to cast one one spark or scorch spitter, or yeah, scorch spitter. Uh, whenever scorch spitter attacks, it deals one damage to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. So if your opponent has uh, you're attacking a planeswalker that needs to go, he automatically, no matter what happens, gets that one damage in. At least you take a counter off, or you deal at least one damage to your opponent, even if he's gonna block it. So I went ahead with two of those. The next one was Ashmouth Hound. He is a 2 to cast 2-1. Uh, whenever he uh, blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, he deals 1 damage to that creature. So it can't be really chump blocked um, as easily as other creatures. So if he gets blocked by a 1-1, one, one, he actually kills it beforehand and still gets through. So there is that. I went with 2 of those. Uh, the next one is Fire Urchin. He is a 2 to cast 1 3 trample. This is where new, different abilities come in. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, he gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. There are, we're, we're in mono red. There's going to be burn. You're going to be casting things just to clear the board so you can get through. So a, each time you do that, he gets bigger. So, And he has trample too, so he can get through some damage. Uh, the next one was Valakit Predator. I loved the picture on this, by the way. Just, it's 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 a fire dog. <laughs> uh, so anyway, he's a three to cast two two with Landfall. Landfall is an ability that was in Zendikar. This is uh, the second series of Zendikar. Uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, he gets plus two plus two until the turn. Now remember, <clears throat> there are faux fetches in this. So, with the Faux Fetches, it enters the battlefield, you go and get another one, he gets plus two, plus two twice. So keep that in mind when you're playing. If you have some strategy you need, you can give him plus four, plus four, making him basically a six, six. So keep that in mind. Alright, Chandra's Spitfire, three to cast, one, three. It has flying. It has the evasion that I wanted to have. And, whenever an opponent is dealt non-combat damage, she, uh, Chandra's Spitfire... Gets plus three plus zero and ten a turn. That's each time. So, if for some reason you have a couple shocks in hand, and you double shock your opponent, so not only does they get four damage, but this creature gets plus six plus zero. So keep that in mind as well for when you're strategizing what your hand looks like. <clears throat> All right, Hellfire Mongrel, three to cast two two. At the beginning of each opponent upkeep. If that player has two or fewer cards in hand, Hellfire Mongrel deals two damage to him or her. So, uh, for you older players, if you're watching, uh, it's kind of like a rack effect. 
so the less cards they have, the more damage they take. Uh, this one just has a static. If they have two or fewer, it deals two. So, uh, like I said, these elementals all had different abilities, but all of them are, you know, while they might not have a, a theme to them, they all have, they're all good. So, uh, Pyrehound, 4 to cast 2 3. Trample, so it helps get damage through when it gets bigger. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, put a plus one, plus one counter on him. Remember those two shocks I talked about earlier? Not only does he uh, get it, but he gets it permanently. So he can go from a 2 3 to a 3 4 in one shock. And he has trample, so he just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Two of those go in there. Lovakin Brawler, 4 to cast, 2 4. They all have weird, <coughs> like, power toughnesses for their casting cost, too. Uh, so he's a 4 to cast, 2 4. Whenever it attacks, it gets plus 1 plus 0 into end of turn for each elemental you control. Remember I said, see that symbol right there, M20? Uh, of course, that 2020 made elementals matter. Uh, this one, more so than others, if you have a big board, he can get pretty big pretty fast. The only thing I wish he had was Trample, but, you know, it is what it is. He gets pretty beefy, though. Uh, Lightning Elemental, 4 to cast, 4 1, Haste. He's basically like a mini ball lightning. Uh, he just comes in and, and hits real hard, probably dies immediately as well. Uh, Alright, so into the. Into the instants and sorceries. I have a whole bunch of different ones in here just for different scenarios. So it's to help make your creatures bigger because most of a lot of them care. That was the only common theme I found amongst all of them is that instants and sorceries to them matter. <coughs> so the first one I went with was Reality Hemorrhage. Uh, it does two damage to anything you want. Uh, it's Devoid. So what that means is it's colorless instead of red. It takes red to cast it, but it's considered colorless as far as its its identity. So, if something has protection for red for some reason, this still hits it because it's not a red card. <coughs> Old staple from back in the day, Incinerate. Incinerate deals three damage to anything, basically, and creatures damaged by this cannot regenerate. Regeneration was a thing back in the day. It's not really so much a thing now. Very few creatures get regenerate, but... It still takes care of that if you do run across that player that has them. Uh, Chandra's Outrage, it's 4 to cast. It does 4 damage to a creature and 2 damage to its controller. Uh, I went with this one because it, it, it's kind of heavy on the damage to the creature. Some creatures get really big really fast, so I wanted to make sure you had enough power to hit it. Annihilating Fire, it's a more expensive Lightning Bolt, or a more expensive Incinerate. Uh, it's it's a deals three damage to target creature or player. Uh, basically, it's any. I think that they added all that uh, with the new uh, wordings that this is three damage to anything. So I think it also hits planeswalkers as well, but I don't remember. Uh, but if a creature dealt damage this way would die, exile it. This gets rid of any like helps get rid of <coughs> zombies for the most part or recurring creatures. You know, it helps keep them at bay. Remember the aforementioned shocks? They're in there. It's simple. One to cast. Deal two damage to anything. And they put four of them in there because it's actually quite a... Uh, shocks do a lot more than people think. They, they, they actually clear a lot out. Uh, magma Spray. It's essentially a shock but for a creature. Uh, however, if that creature would die, you exile it just like Incinerate. It's, again, help keep zombie style effects or, or recursion or reanimation at bay. So, I went ahead with two of them. This one was one of the few things that I put in here that was different. Uh, Implement of Combustion, basically, it's an artifact, but it's kind of a red artifact. Uh, you can sacrifice it to deal one damage to target player. Uh, it doesn't sound impressive. The only reason why it's in here is because of the second ability. Uh, when it's put into your graveyard, draw a card, it's to help keep the... the, the the resources flowing, it kind of helps you draw more cards. It also feeds into the Spitfire. Whenever they're dealt non-combat damage, it gets plus three plus zero. So it's a little bit of uh, uh, of combo there. Not really combo, but a little tech. Alright, now for the rares. I said Ball Lightning earlier, I put it in there. Ball Lightning is the quintessential just deal six damage because why not? 30k 6-1, Trample, it has haste, and it dies at the end of the turn. 
Uh, I did not get it from my Modern Horizons boxes, but I was trying to get the Thunderkin Awakening so that I could uh, recur this over and over and over again. So you basically had a ball lightning every turn, but unfortunately I did not pull one. Uh, the next one, Ember Swallower. Oh, I, let, me, let me go back. It says Summon Ball Lightning. It has been changed to Summon Elemental. Just so you guys are aware, it's an Elemental itself. Uh, Ember Swallower. It's a 4 to cast 4-5. Uh, another deck I had earlier uh, had a 4 to cast 4-5 in it. And that's nothing to sneeze at. 4 to cast 4-5s are actually still pretty big. Uh, but it gets bigger. So it is a 4 to cast 4-5 with Monstrosity 3. So when you pay the cost, if it's not monstrous, you put three plus one plus one counters on it, making it even bigger. Uh, when it becomes monstrous, though, each player sacrifices three lands. That is, you know, it sounds like it would be bad, but for the most part, you're just trying to keep their resources at bay so they can't kill it. <coughs> so that's what that's for. Uh, the next rare is Mind Sparker. It is a three to cast, three two. It has first strike. That's kind of what the card's in here for is it's a 3 to cast 3 2 first striking elemental. That's kind of the basic idea for it, uh, why I put it in here. But the second ability can be helpful. Uh, whenever an opponent casts a white or blue instant or sorcery, it deal he deals 2 damage to that player. <laughs> so say you're playing a deck like Is It Drakes. You have him out. He's going to kill himself with all the instant sorceries he's casting. Uh, I didn't put it in there for that, but it is, you know, anytime an ability is on a creature, especially one that's 3 to cast and has 3 power and it has first strike, you know, it can't hurt. So, uh, alright, so the special foil, or special card, which is, uh, for this one I chose, was Dictator of the Twin Gods in foil. Uh, it's 5 to cast, it has flash, so it's a surprise. Uh... Basically, if you can get the buff in, so if you, say it's mid to late game, and it's say turn 7 or 8, you flash this in, if you have a Spitfire on the board, you flash it in, you cast a Shock, you get 4 damage with the Shock, the Spitfire gets plus 3 plus 0, uh, and then you hit that, uh, it has flying, so you hit the opponent and it's double the damage, so I believe that's 8, so that's, uh, that's 12 damage right there, just from one card, so... That's the tech for that deck. Alright, we are a mono deck, so it's mostly mountains. However, the special lands are Blighted Gorge. It adds a colorless. Doesn't really matter because we're in mono, it's not going to matter uh, what color it creates. Uh, but the ability is to deal 2 damage to a creature or a player. You sacrifice it and do that. Now, the reason why <laughs> for this is I'm looking for non-combat damage ways to deal damage for the Spitfires. So there are two of them in the deck. Uh, Looming Spires, it enters tapped. Uh, when it enters, target creature gets plus one, plus one, and first strike. First strike is important. First strike can actually be the difference between you losing a match and winning the match because if your creatures die unexpectedly and you can give them first strike to get through and kill theirs, you can win with that. It doesn't happen often, but it does help. And Faux Fetches. Now, in a mono monocolored deck, I put Faux Fetches in because you really just want to get rid of the bad draws of land. So, uh, it, that's the excuse for every deck, but it's more important in monocolored decks because once you've got three or four of a single color out, you don't really need more than that after that in a monocolored deck, but, you know, it's helpful to get that, um, get the use out of it, so... Alright, so as far as $20 budget decks go, this is Elementals.